Welcome to Wednesday Wealth Talk. Today I'm going to talk about your wealth is going to determine your health. Before we get into that, I just want to let you know that I have a free book for you just for connecting here today. It's my book called Potential, The Secret Power of 10. I know you're going to enjoy this book. This is one of the big secrets that Rockefeller used to build all of his wealth. Not just his wealth, but generational wealth. I want to get this little book out to you. And all you got to do is shoot me a text. Just text me at WWT to 352-283-8016. Again, that phone number is 352-283-8016. 352-283-8016 and just put WWT for Wednesday Wealth Talk and uh, we'll get that book right out to you. No shipping, no handling, my gift. It's my gift to you. You don't have to pay anything and uh, you shoot me a text. We'll get that out to you right away. Well, we're talking today about your wealth is going to determine your health. Now, if your health is very important to you, then your wealth should also be just as important to you. Now, there's an ancient script that says this. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. And so we know the ancient biblical text gives us a clue into the insight and desire of God for our lives, which should be the desire for us in our own lives, that number one, that we prosper financially. Number two, that we also prosper in our health. And then number three, that we also prosper in our soul. And what you'll find out when we look at the subject of wealth, that all three of those areas of your life are very, very important and they're interwoven together. So here's what we know. Number one, if you lack wealth, it's going to impact your health when you're older. And we're going to look at that today. And in the same way, on the reverse side, your, your health can also impact your wealth. So you cannot be casual about your wealth, nor can you be casual about your wealth. You have to take both of those matters very, very, very seriously. And sadly... I find that a lot of spiritual people, they, they maximize their, the importance for their spirituality, but they tend to minimize the importance of their financial intelligence. And what I'm here to tell you that all of those impact one another. I've heard people say over the years, well, be careful that if you get wealthy, you may leave God. And after all, I've seen people who went to church who loved God, but then they left the church and they left their walk with God and now they're, they're just sinners. They're just heathen people now. And I say, oh yeah, well, how many people left the church because of poverty, because of lack, because... They were poor and their health went bad and uh, they got sick and then they gave up on God, gave up on their belief systems about God. We tend to only focus on the casualties of those who become wealthy instead of also being aware that possibly there's many more casualties of those who experience and live in poverty in their life. So what I want to just encourage you with is that it's very important that you be aware of the two dynamics. Wealth affects your health. And in a recent report, 
they the association actually of health and wealth said this and it's very interesting it said according to nber there is a strong correlation between wealth and health their study found that people who had substantially high assets lived longer did you get that meaning people who are more wealthy tend to live longer yet that portion of the population is the minority so people who enter into retirement with plenty of assets is the minority that's the no-brainer right five percent live a wealthy lifestyle 95 percent live in poverty or middle class and a bigger percent of seniors live at poverty level and it says here it says a large portion of people die with less than ten thousand dollars wow and absolutely no amount of assets to their name including housing wealth did you just hear that a large proportion of people die and don't even have ten thousand dollars in the bank and have no assets to their name now the ancient script says that a good person leaves an inheritance to their children's children and yet we find that the majority of people in their older age they leave behind I've seen it time and time. They don't even leave behind $10,000. They leave behind a huge funeral bill that the family has to fight over to pay for and figure it out when they're all living paycheck to paycheck. And this is a sad statistic to me and a warning to us, a wake-up call hopefully to you. But you can't be casual about this anymore. And it says this, the article says, could it be that, the on, that only those in the top minority, meaning those who have money, can afford the necessities and the necessity procedures and treatments to stay healthy longer than those who can't? So meaning they're saying, is there a possibility that the difference, the reason why wealthier people live longer is because they can afford the treatments, they can afford the prescriptions they can afford the things that they need to keep their body healthy the comparison study also showed that most of the individuals who passed away in poverty later on were not living in poverty during their 50s and their 60s wow that is so huge so basically this report is revealing that the majority of people who have wealth live longer. Those who enter into their retirement and end up in poverty, which is the majority of people. I'm here in Florida. Trust me, it's the majority of senior citizens. Those who end up living in poverty, their health is impacted in a negative way because they can't afford what they need to be able to get the treatments, to get the care that's necessary to be able to be successful in their older life, to live a happy life in their retirement. And the interesting thing is what they just said there, that people in their 50s and their 60s, they weren't poor in their 50s and 60s, so they went into retirement and they didn't have enough wealth to be able to sustain them. So at Walt Wealth Talk today, I want to say this. At some point, you got to pay. Yes. You see, so many people are casual about developing their wealth intelligence because <laughs> they're too busy being entertained by television and football games and basketball games and soccer games. And, and, and they're busy being entertained instead of focusing on being educated about wealth and money. See, you got to pay sometimes. You can play right now, but eventually you will pay in your retirement. Or, or here's what you can do. You can pay right now. You can do the study. You can do the work. You can turn off the television and the entertainment 
and build your business and focus on building your wealth. You pay right now. And guess what's going to happen when you're older? You're going to live longer and you're going to be able to play longer. I hope you've enjoyed this at Wealth Talk. And that's exactly, this is exactly why I've created Wealth Tribe. It's an online platform where we educate you on one subject and that subject is the subject of wealth. We bring millionaires, we, we interview them, we, we do live coaching events, we develop a community of people who are focused on not just building their spirituality but building a wealthy lifestyle so they can thrive, not just in their 50s and 60s, but you can go beyond that because you're going to live to about 87 years old and you might as well live those final years really enjoying life, healthy, strong, and wealthy. Thanks for joining. Be so thankful to you if you'd share this and uh, tell your friends about Wednesday Well Talk with Dr. J.